Our setting is the complex plane. And to remind you what the complex plane is, I'm going to draw the plane where my horizontal axis, that's the real part of my complex number, and the imaginary axis is going to be, uh, well, the imaginary part of a complex number. So remember that a complex number z, it has those two parts, and uh, we can plot all these things as a plus bi. Now, how on earth is the limit as z goes to infinity of negative z equal to infinity, just like the uh, video title suggests? So like, that kind of defies all intuition that you have coming out of like a calculus class where you deal with real numbers. So like for real numbers, we know that the limit as x goes to infinity of negative x is equal to negative infinity. And it's sort of intuitive, at least, you know, if you feel good about calculus. But uh, let me just try to talk about it over to the side. So I'm thinking about a function. My function is plug in, when you plug in x, you get negative x. So like I've got the domain real line on the left and then like the codomain is over on the right. And uh, I just wanna walk you through when you plug in one, it spits out negative one. When you plug in 10, it spits out negative 10. When you plug in 100, it spits out negative 100. And so what I'm getting at is as the input x increases to the right, what we think is towards infinity on the real line, um, the output f of x decreases toward what we think of as uh, negative infinity. And again, I wanna emphasize like, Infinity is not a point on the real line, nor is negative infinity a point on the real line to the left, right? But it says that it's this idea of it's some kind of a limit to the left. It's some kind of a limit toward the right. Okay, and so, okay, so that was kind of intuitive, sure. But, um, you know, the definition of a limit is something that you'd encounter in like an advanced calculus class. Um, and so in that case, you kind of know that um, it can be a little bit hard to work with. And so down here, let me try to walk you through it, though, because we're going to need it later on. If I draw my same kind of setup, I'm thinking the domain is on the left and the codomain is on the right, and my function represents uh, a, a map between them. Um, so what are we saying? What's the definition to say that uh, the limit as x goes to infinity uh, is, um, well, negative infinity? So for any, any real number m, there exists a positive real number, n sub m, and I just have that subscript there to try to emphasize it. You know, maybe capital N depends on what m you have, but for each m, you can find an n, and there's n, such that if you take an x to the right of n, then its output f of x should be to the left of m. So if you think about, if you could do that for every real number m, right, then what we're saying is your function values are moving arbitrarily far to the left. In other words, they're headed towards negative infinity. So again, that's trying to uh, make the definition a little bit easier to think about and work with. So what on earth does the limit as z goes to infinity of f of z equals infinity actually mean? So now what we need to do is get into some similar definitions for, you know, what are the definitions for complex limits at infinity? So we're gonna do a few of them, a few different scenarios. So the first one we're gonna look at here is uh, we're going to say that the limit as z approaches z naught of f of z is infinity if, and I'm going to try to sketch this out with some pictures so you can follow along. And so for every real number, capital M, so real, uh, real positive number, and so I'm thinking of that as going to be some kind of a radius uh, of a circle over in the complex plane on the right. So I've drawn you that circle in red. So for every positive real number M, there exists a positive real number delta, so I've drawn it there, and delta is the radius of a circle around my point z naught, such that whenever I have a z inside of that circle of radius delta with z naught, its output, f of z, has a modulus bigger than m. In other words, the output f of z lands outside of the red circle. So that's what it's gonna mean to say the limit as z goes to z naught of f of z is infinity. Down below, let's do another case. What does it mean to say the limit as z goes to infinity of f of z is a plus bi? But what's it mean to say that as z goes to infinity, you get a complex number a plus bi? So again, let's try to walk through it. You notice over there on the right, I've put the a plus bi somewhere in the plane. So what that's gonna mean is for every positive real number epsilon, so think of epsilon as again being the radius of some little disk around a plus bi, there exists, again, a real number n that's positive, and that's gonna be the radius of some circle, such that whenever z has a modulus larger than n, and so that means that z is just outside of that circle of radius n, then when I plug z into my function f, 
it lands inside of the epsilon circle of uh, centered at a plus bi. So all the points outside the yellow circle on the left land inside of the red circle on the right when you plug them into that. So that's what it means to say that uh, that limit is a plus bi. The last case we're going to look at, what's it mean to say the limit as z goes to infinity of f of z is infinity? So for every real number m that's positive, again, that's going to be this radius of some circle on the right, there exists a positive real number n that's the radius of a circle on the left, such that if you take a complex number with modulus larger than n, in other words, whenever you have a complex number that's outside of this circle of radius n, when you plug it into your function f, you get a complex number that is outside of the circle of radius m. So again, that's what it means in symbols to say the limit as z goes to infinity of f of z is positive infinity. So now let's actually go and try to compute our example. Again, the limit that we're after, this non-intuitive thing. And so we'll try to draw it out too. Like what does this function f of z equals minus c do? And if I draw you a picture here, you know, there's z. And what I've also drawn is its modulus. Remember, that's just distance from zero, in case you didn't know that. And uh, I see that this function f, it's just going to take my complex number z and reflect it over the origin. Right? If you distribute that negative through a plus bi, you're just going to get minus a minus bi. So you just reflect both the x and the y coordinates. And so f of z should be down here. And what I want you to notice is that uh, the distance from the origin is the same. So notice that they have the same modulus. All right. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through our picture again and think about this limit as z goes to infinity. And uh, what I'm thinking is, you know, my picture above here, thinking, well, as the modulus of z gets bigger, like the modulus of the output gets bigger too. And so that leads me to think that probably satisfies definition three that we looked at above. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through that definition um, just in this particular picture. So remember that was for every um, positive real number m. And so I'm going to take that. You draw me any circle of radius m over here on the right. There exists a positive real number n, so there exists a circle over here on the left, such that whenever you have a point that is outside of that circle on the left, so whose mod you have a point whose modulus is bigger than n, I haven't labeled n over there on the left on purpose, but uh, when you plug that into your function, then the modulus of the output is going to be larger than what m was. In other words, the output should be outside of the circle of radius m. And now the question is, like, what on earth is n, right? We win the game if we can say what n guarantees me that the outputs land outside of the pink circle over on the right. And, but if we're just going to reflect z, if f of z is just minus z, right, then those two circles, you could just use the same radius over on the left. So I think we could just use n equal to m. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually try to prove what we suspect here the limit as z goes to infinity of minus z is positive infinity. All right, so let's let m be a positive real number. Then if I take z to be a complex number whose modulus is larger than m, and again, that is up in my picture over on the left, I take z outside of the circle centered at the origin of radius m. And uh, here also, you know, here's what I'm saying, that I'm taking n to be m right here. Then what do we see? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what the modulus of f of z is. The modulus of f of z, it's the same thing as the modulus of negative z. That's the same thing as the modulus of z, and that, of course, is larger than m. So what we just showed is that I can guarantee you that if I pick the input large enough, or if I pick the input to have a large enough modulus, then its output will have a modulus larger than whatever m you started with, than whatever m somebody gave you. So that means that it goes to infinity. All right, but wait a minute. Like maybe you're still, you know, really confused about what just happened, or maybe you're not entertained, in which case, why are you still watching this? Anyway, wait a minute, why did this happen? Like, why isn't it negative infinity? Like, why don't we have that symbol here just like we did for the real line? And so let me try to explain why we don't bother with negative infinity uh, for the complex plane. One of the reasons is because the real numbers, they have an ordering. I have like a less than or equal to. I can compare any two real numbers that you give me. I can say one real number is less than or equal to another real number or vice versa. 
And uh, and that ordering there, I, I can do some algebra with it. It's compatible with addition and multiplication. And on the real line, there's just not much that can happen. One thing that can happen is you can decrease negative one, negative two, negative three, or you can increase one, two, three. And the point here is that these are the only two directions that you can move on the real line. So naturally, there's going to be what we might call two points in infinity, namely negative infinity and positive infinity. And again, what these represent, negative infinity represents sort of the limit of continually decreasing in scenario one up there to the left, whereas positive infinity, that point at infinity represents, you know, continually increasing to the right up there in scenario two. And so these two things are like the negative infinity and positive infinity that are useful in like calculus, at least for calculus for the real numbers that you encounter in calculus one. The problem is that the complex numbers, they don't have such an ordering. So it doesn't make sense to say a plus bi is less than or equal to c plus di. It just won't work. And so when we think about this, this symbol, like z goes to infinity, what we really mean here is that the modulus of z is getting larger. Not that like a complex number z is like actually getting larger than some other complex number, right? So what we're really doing is we're comparing the modulus of complex numbers to talk about, um, you know, one is larger than the other. And so rather than having a point at infinity for each direction that z can increase, and if you're in the plane, there's not just left and right anymore. There's all sorts of directions, and I've just kind of sketched you out at a few. And so, you know, we could talk about going to infinity in each of these directions. And so there'd be much more, there'd be infinitely many little infinities there, if you like. That seems super complicated. Why don't we just say that they all just toward, tend toward one point at infinity? So in other words, whatever direction the modulus gets large in, right, we're just going to say the limit of that process is one symbol. The limit of that process, no matter what ray I, the modulus is growing along, if you like, the limit of that process is the symbol infinity.